Hello everyone, well I'm continuing to check out some more operating systems which I don't normally look at. So here we have TrueOS. Now I cannot call this a Linux distribution because it is most certainly not Linux. It is BSD. In fact, TrueOS was formerly known as PCBSD, Berkeley System Distribution. Now I picked up a brilliant quote when I was looking around, so let me read this out to you. BSD is what you get when a bunch of Unix hackers sit down to try and port a Unix system to the PC. Linux is what you get when a bunch of PC hackers sit down and try and write a Unix system for the PC. So, the two operating systems are distantly related. I'm quite excited to see the Lumina desktop in action in its native operating system, because I've seen it before in Debian, and it was ridiculously lightweight. It uses the Qt toolkit. So let's see how memory usage compares. And that's quite surprising, it's using 780 meg of RAM out of 16 gig. What? Lumina in Debian used under 200 meg of RAM. But looking at the processor usage in HTOP, we can see it's idling. So yeah, that's a plus. The default layout of the desktop is to provide an iconified view. However, the behavior is somewhat different than you might expect. For example, you can't drag a selection of icons at once. There is no, well, you can't highlight multiple icons. You can't even shift an arrow click. In fact, can you arrow click? No, you can't. You can move them around, so you can set them to different points if you want to, but it might catch you out on the behavior here. So yeah, just a little bit different. You have an application menu on the bottom left hand side and it has an application searcher as we've already seen with Q-Terminal. There are links to browsing the files, applications, control panel, preferences and the option to exit desktop or shut down the computer I should say. That's the control panel. Browsing the applications, it's defined into different categories. This is a bit of a small view really to take a look at. The close, minimize, maximize buttons are on the right hand side and if you double click on the application title bar, the application rolls up. There's no arrow snap like effect, so it is a very basic desktop. Right clicking on desktop brings up the application list. I think this is somewhat easier to navigate than the application menu on the bottom panel. Got a couple of different options here. There's the desktop information. And to finish off the layout of the desktop, on the bottom panel we also have a link to the network manager, volume control, sysadm settings, as well as clock and calendar. Customization of the desktop is relatively straightforward. Right, look, you've got wallpaper, you've got a screensaver, which is a nice feature. Don't seem to see that too much these days. Ah, yes, yeah, a very nice screensaver indeed. Vigilance, cameras everywhere, monitoring you. I'll be happier with that level of humorous monitoring. Installation of new applications is carried out either via the terminal using PKG or this GUI called App Cafe. Got a couple of different repositories you can use, TrueOS Base, TrueOS Major, and Local. Not sure about this flashing animation, so let's try and find something. So can we install GIMP? Yes, we can. And as you may have noticed, I have installed Inkscape. So I was messing around to see what would happen, really. Let's go through the installation. So yeah, 16 dependencies, 56 meg to download, and 190 meg of disk space required. So it says pending, and it will get on with the installation. It's not exactly fast to the installation, I noticed. When I was installing KDN Live, it did take quite a while. Now I will admit there were a lot of dependencies required, but even so, it still took a while. Looking at the performance of the application opening, yeah, it's not too bad. Not the fastest I've seen, but it's by no means slow. The presentation here in LibreOffice yeah, looks okay. Again, maybe not perfect on the font rendering, but not bad. It's not bad. Notice with the mouse cursor, it is partially transparent. It's weird you have a normal size in the application, but when you're navigating the desktop, it goes to a smaller view. Let's open a couple of applications at the same time. Yeah. See, all well and good. VLC Media Player was included by default, so playing patent encumbered media files was no problem at all. But I thought, okay, let's try out Clementine to see how uh, 
MP3s can play like. And no problem at all. The codecs were already included by default. So yeah, playing an MP3. True OS is described as being an easier BSD system to get going, and I have to agree with it. It really is. I had absolutely no problems at all getting the system up and running. It is not as feature rich though as some of the Linux distributions I've tried. I mean, although so, what am I saying? Like right? feature rich, uh, the ability to use it on a more everyday basis. So let's say Steam. Some people like gaming. Now, Steam is available in the repositories of many different Linux distributions. That is not the case here in TrueOS. The file manager Insight does not appear to be able to navigate network connected drives. So for example, if I was to try and do SSH and a particular IP address, that doesn't work. So when I was testing out media files, I did have to inject the files into the system for simplicity because I opted to install SSH during the operating system installer. Not difficult really, but uh, a bit of a disadvantage to have to go down that route. They could think, although I'm using the Qt desktop environment, perhaps I could install a different file manager. For example, Dolphin. But Dolphin is not included in the standard repositories. So that option is not available. Or at least not available simply. It's a pity really, because Dolphin is based on Qt, so would be able to fit in with this desktop quite nicely. But we do have some KDE applications available here very much a case of hit and miss of what we get on the applications. And this is in comparison to many other Linux distributions. There is the options of installing other desktop environments, although this was not something I particularly explored because I was more interested in the Lumina desktop environment. The browser of choice is Kupzilla, but we appear to be able to install Firefox and Chromium easy enough. Just off the top of my head, these applications do appear to be the latest and up to date. TrueOS is a rolling distribution and they offer a stable and unstable version. The stable gets updated on a reasonably regular basis, and I suppose it's more of a tried and tested version of the applications with which you will get. The unstable gets updated on a very regular basis and you may suffer some breakages. Overall, the system has been easy enough to pick up and use. I was able to install the VirtualBox guest edition drivers, and I noticed there was the option of installing the NVIDIA drivers. Although it did say latest, I couldn't necessarily see a version number. In terms of actually installing and using the system, it should be very easy to get up and running. But I expect you may find some disadvantages on applications that don't exist in the repositories. TrueOS and BSD in general do show a lot of similarities with Linux, since they are related distantly at the Unix point. So yeah, I've certainly found it an interesting operating system to use. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.